Hello everyone, Paul from High Tech Legion, and even the best of us sometimes get a little bit uh, sweaty when it comes to overclocking, whether it is our CPU or GPU. And in this case, it's going to be a GPU, and that is going to be the new GeForce GTX 960. The specific one I'm talking about is by EVGA, and it's the Super Super Clocked, which has an overclocked factory value of 1279 and a boost clock of 1342. Of course, this is a factory overclock, so it's guaranteed that you're going to get at least those speeds. So this is above what you're going to get, which is roughly about 1176 on the, uh, on the uh, base card itself. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the interface. Of course, this is EVGA Precision X, and it is a utility to assist us in performance tuning, or thus, overclocking our video card. This happens to be version 16, and it's the 5.27 uh, denomination of Precision X 16. So let's take a look at the UI here. Of course, we have the EVGA logo up on the top left-hand side. Below that, we have fan speed. Okay, so we're going to, with this, it's basically going to show you an up and down when the fan kicks in. Of course, right now, since this is a 0 dB fan, until it hits about 60 degrees Celsius, as you can see, we're at 52. It's not on right now, so of course, the fan is not on, so we're not getting any RPMs out of it. But once, once it hits 60, you'll notice that the RPMs will go on, and it'll show you the RPMs. I do have it on auto at the present time, as you can see by the auto being lit. If I wanted to shut auto off, I could go ahead and shut it off by clicking on it and then clicking apply. Once we go to another part of auto, we could go to our fan curve, and that's going to bring up the display in the center here. Once we enable automatic, automatic fan control, which would be our fan curb, what we're going to do is we could set these values by raising or lowering, lowering the bars to where we want the fan to kick on, kick off, or do what we need it to do. So, of course, we have different, the different presets, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and shut that off, and let's go back. And let's go back down to where it says test here on the left-hand side. If I had OC Scanner installed, which I don't, this is uh, another EVGA program, and it's basically a benchmark or stress testing program to test your overclock. It uses a Furmark type of display to test your overclock to make sure it's stable. So you can go ahead and download that off the EVGA site. Of course, in the written review, we do have a link to it where you could go and grab that. Below that, we have the on-screen display. OSD is on-screen display. So basically, what's going to happen, it's going to bring up an on-screen display up while you're gaming. And we'll look at that once we get into actually benchmarking this. And then, of course, graph. The graph is going to, the graph is going to show us the graphs on, on the precision tune. So by me double-clicking on that, what it's going to do for the on-screen display it's going to bring up this and we could set what we want to see on our on-screen display by just clicking on each of each of these so if I want to show power on the on-screen display I click on power and then where it says show an OSD of course we want to click on GPU 1 because I have one GPU in here so now on the on-screen display GPU 1 under GPU 1 we will see the power so next I want to go ahead and I want to watch GPU temperatures. So once I do that, I'm going to click GPU temperature, make sure that's there, and then so on, so on, and so on. You got everything from power all the way to frame time and frame rate and over voltage, power limit, etc. You could show anything you want on the on-screen display. Now going over to the left, let's do the left before we actually do the center because that's going to be the meat and potatoes of everything. On the left is our over voltage. Of course, this is a slider, and as you can see, I have over voltage on, so I can lift and raise the slider to where I want to. It goes up to a maximum of 100 millivolts. 
and of course the minimum is zero. Then it goes in increments of six, 12, 18, so it goes in increments of six. Below that you'll see a K boost. K boost, what that does is it allows the the card, once you click that on, the card will run at full boost speeds at all times. So it won't throttle down like right now you see our GPU clocks at 696 because we're technically idle except for me recording the screen here. So you'll notice that you know we're it, it's it's throttling on us because it's saving it, it you know it's energy saving. Of course with these Maxwell chips they're very uh, energy efficient and we want it to do that. That's a good thing. But if you do click on K boost it will keep the boost up at all times so your clock will be running your your card will basically be running at a uh, hundred percent uh, GPU clock speeds at all times. Below that we have our apply and our default buttons. Of course you know what those are. If you change settings you click apply. If you don't like them you click default it'll bring it back to default. Underneath that we have the ability to change, save up to nine profiles. So technically what you're going to do is you're going to I'm left-handed so I'm going to right click on it or actually left click on it and that's going to save and then if I right click on it it'll actually select the uh, select the profile so I'm gonna go ahead and shut that off next we have our center what is that it's our nice tachometer here the tachometer shows everything so of course it's gonna show you via a meter it's going to show you in the center here what the actual numbers are, your temperatures and your voltages. Of course, the white denotes your base clock, the red denotes your boost clock. Again, this is set to 1279 on the base and 1342 on the boost. Below that, we have our power target. Our power target is just a slider. We can change that. And as you notice, the GPU temp target right now we have linked. If I were to unlink that, I could slide both of them and it doesn't matter. Once I link it back, when I move it, it's going to raise the GPU temp chart. I could also set the priority to that so I could go from power target to GPU temp target. We're going to go ahead and just set that back to default here. Of course, now we have our GPU clock offset slider and we have our memory clock offset slider. Now, personally, I've been overclocking for a long time and I will say this years ago sometimes it did make a difference with the memory that we were using on on video cards to you know maybe maybe boost the memory a little bit but nowadays I have really don't see a need to why put extra stress on your card when you're only gonna get maybe a frame per second what is that gonna do to your frame buffer it's doing nothing if you're gaming over 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second one frame per second is not going to harm your life so I tend not to uh, overclock the memory clock uh, because I haven't really seen anything now of course there's two different schools of thoughts other people like to do it if you're one that likes to do it feel free go ahead I don't do it alright let's go ahead and start overclocking this well let me show you something I'm sorry I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you the center here these two arrows of course between the precision x16 are going to bring up different uh, settings inside of precision precision x of course this is the graph if I double click on that it's gonna bring up my hardware monitor and the hardware monitor is going to actually show me all the different temperatures, all the different uh, our fan speeds, power limiters, etc. If we go ahead and click over one more time, of course, this is our settings, and I'll just go through that real quick. We have a fan, non-screen display, profile, general setting, interface, monitoring, frame rate, target, and pixel clock. When you click on one of them, let's say we click on general what is it going to say it's going to say start minimize so of course we're going to start it we're going to start this with the OS if you like to want it to start when the OS starts so it automatically pops up of course right here which I which I neglected to show you before is once you get a stable overclock if you want it to be overclocked when you boot up Windows click start up if we click that back we could also go to the OSD which is show the OSD setter 
show the system time, and this is all with the on-screen display. The on-screen display actually has two different types of settings, and we could go there, and this is basically to toggle it on, toggle it off, etc. So there's a lot of things that you could tweak with. If I were to go through and show you everything, we'd be here for 45 minutes, and I really don't want to do that. So feel free to go ahead and uh, test that out for yourself. Now, for the sake of this video, um, in the re written review, I do have a screenshot of me overclocking this to 1544 at 6 millivolts. Um, this is the third time I'm recording this video, and the last two times I forgot to add the millivolts. So I don't want to have to record this again. So just to make sure, I'm going to boost it to 12. But believe me, I've done this with 6 millivolts. I just don't feel like wasting another 35 minutes and then having something happen and not realize that I didn't adjust it. So the first thing I'm going to do right now is just go up 12 millivolts. As I said, I did it with 6. It is stable with 6. I ran all my overclock benchmarks with 6 millivolts. So we'll go ahead and we'll set that to 12 right now. So I'm going to hit apply. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring up Unigen Heaven. Going to run that at 19 by 20, uh, 19 by 10, 1920 by 1080, and we'll put it in a window display so uh, we could actually see what's going on around, and I could actually show you how to use this. All right, of course it's going to have sound on it, and we don't want to record that sound, so let's go ahead and shut the sound off. Now, as we talked about that on-screen display, if you look over up here on the top left-hand side, you'll see the EVGA Precision 16X. X16 version 5.27. We have our power, we have our GPU clock, we also have our GPU temperature there. So that's the on-screen display. Now I showed you that I could shut it off by hitting certain things. So I had it set to, if I hit the end button that it shuts it off. The power up, uh, the, the page up button actually turns it on and the page down if I were to hide it, which is the end button, and go ahead and hit page up it will bring it back on so we'll go ahead and hide that for now all right so basically the first thing that I do is I go ahead and set my power target on my lower end cards I only go usually to 105 this one will go to 110 but we're going to stay at 105 and I'm going to hit apply there and that will actually set my power target to 105 now you'll see the boost clock is actually at 1442 right now and yes we did talk about that it was set to 1342 out of the factory. These cards have a tendency to over boost a little bit more than what uh, the manufacturers say that they're going to boost for. So that's an added little bonus there. All right, so let's go ahead and start overclocking. Normally when I begin to overclock anything, I will go up 50 at first. So let's go ahead and set that down to 50. I'd rather use uh, my keyboard than my slider because I always, always end up missing it. And then we'll hit enter and then we'll hit apply. And now you notice that once I hit apply plus the 50, we're going to go up to 1492 here. Our temp is still at 68 degrees Celsius and our voltage, of course, is 1206 millivolts. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead up, and I know that this will go actually go to 102, so I'm going to go ahead and slide it to 102. going to hit enter. I'm going to hit apply, and you'll notice that we're up to 1544 right now. Uh, fan, as you can see on the left-hand side, we're going to actually start the benchmark now. Fan on the left side, you can see what it is. It's at 790 RPMs right now. We're running at 68 degrees Celsius. We have a GPU clock of 1544. Our voltage is 1206 uh, millivolts. And now if I wanted to save this profile, I'm just going to go down here, and now it's saved. So very easy, very simple. We're saved. So just say I want to go ahead and look at the graph while we're doing this. I could go ahead and bring my graph up. And now we can actually look at where we're at with, with everything. If we go up towards the top here, and let me get my mouse off of that so we can see a little bit better. 
All right, if we go up to the top, we'll see what the power is. Then below that is our memory clock in megahertz. We have our GPU usage. We have our VID usage. Below that is the memory usage in megabytes. So you see we're using 1309 of the two gigs at this present time. We have our fan speed. We're at 23%. We have our power limit here. And then, of course, down below, that is the overvolt max limit. Towards the right-hand side, we have our GPU clock, which is 1544, of course, in the on-screen display. It's showing 1545 at this time. One, you know, one, one uh, megahertz is not going to make a difference. Uh, GPU temperature, of course, is 68 degrees Celsius. And then we have our FB and our bus usage. And then also below that, we have the GPU, GPU voltage, which is 1.206. And then the fan tachometer, of course, which we could see in the uh, UI is at 783 at this time. So I'll go ahead and shut that down right now. And as you can see, as we run through this, I've got my on-screen display on. So if I was even in game, I could go ahead and you know turn my on-screen display on and off, and I could see what my what what my card is doing, what it's not doing what I need to do and let's go ahead just for the fun of it let's go ahead and click on the graph and let's add something else let's say we want to look at our fan tachometer I'm gonna go ahead and click on that click there and you'll notice that we have our fan tachometer showing now so let's add another one let's go to mm, how about frame rate that one sounds good And for some reason, that one's not working at this time. Is it GP1? No, so am I. All right, let's go to uh, GPU voltage. And we'll click on that. And now you can see the GPU voltage went in. So now we had just added more to our on screen display. So if we want to diagnose something, we, we're going to be able to diagnose it, etc. If I wanted to go ahead while I'm still testing and raise this while I'm still testing or lower it while I'm still testing, I could go ahead and just put my slider there and it's going to do a click apply and we're fine. But what I want to do is I want to make sure that I stay on my profile because I'm doing this test and I want to make sure that I have a stable overclock at 1545. And again, if you notice, like I said, the, the boost clock here is 1342. So if I go up plus 100 on the base or the boost, 1342, that's 1442. This is actually, the boost is actually 100, 100 megahertz higher than what we're actually set to. So technically, my boost is set to 1444 right now, and we're actually getting 1544 out of this card. Temperatures are, as you can see, they're remaining very, very uh, stable here. And our benchmark has just finished. And let's see what we get. Thirty-six point eight frames a second. Okay. Now remember, I'm running this in windowed mode. I am recording the screen. Uh, the actual uh, numbers were about forty to forty-one. Uh, prior to this and I did down clock it there for a minute so but in any case you see how the uh, EVGA Precision X work I want to say thank you to everyone for watching this video make sure you subscribe to this channel for more uh, overclocking videos unboxings etc remember guys today High Tech Legion has sponsored this video just so you know Stay thirsty, my friends. Make sure you subscribe for the full review. Visit us at hightechlegion.com. Make sure you like us on Facebook, and make sure you follow us on Twitter. We'll see you the next time. Bye-bye.